Welcome everyone. It is 3 p.m. and it's time for the server room show. This is episode 83. Today uh, I continue from the two-part episode where I have left with PBS part uh, parts one and two. I mentioned that uh, I will talk about uh, another two pieces in in the modern age of uh, history uh, of modern age of internet uh, history, which I think they they belong together. Uh, belong together with BBS and uh, one of that uh, additional piece I, I think they they serve a, a similar purpose and even executed uh, up to certain levels uh, very similarly and they both started at the at the same time I think with a with a one year of difference uh, this other piece is uh, Usenet which uh, is a worldwide distributed uh, discussion system available on uh, computers. Uh, you remember that uh, one of the, the many functions of uh, BBS, just the two I want to bring into, into comparison with, uh, with Usenet, uh, was uh, the, the, the chance for people to be able to, uh, you know, to leave messages and, uh, or messages or comments on, uh, on, on, on ad, to, to other users and uh, in the case of BBS uh, it was also the the option to 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 get uh, binary uh, binary files to to interchange binary files and uh, both these these things uh, exist in Usenet the the option to 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 handle it as a, as a dis uh, distribution uh, dis a distributed discussion system uh, in interchange of uh, messaging is uh, is always reminding me to 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 BBS, but just in another another way of execution and the binary uh, files uh, in interchangeable uh, binary archives is uh, is the other piece which uh, which also makes me remind uh, to BBS uh, each time I I look at uh, Usenet. It was uh, developed from uh, the general purpose uh, Unix to Unix uh, UUCP. Um, dial-up uh, network architecture. Tom Truscott and uh, Jim Ellis uh, conceived the idea in 1979, which is just one year uh, after uh, BBS uh, started out in, uh, in, in the internet. And uh, since uh, one year before, since uh, BBS started, I just say that, in 1978. So in 1979, uh, these two guys conceived the idea of uh, of using it and uh, it was actually established in uh, 1980 uh, another year later so let's say two years between uh, bbs uh, come uh, to become operative and uh, and uh, versus using it uh, users read and uh, post messages called uh, articles or posts and uh, collectively uh, collectively termed news uh, to one or more categories known as uh, news groups Usenet resembles uh, a bulletin board system uh, in many respects, as I as I uh, tried to to explain with my with my own words. Uh, mostly for me, the, the this uh, interchange of messages and uh, and the binary uh, applications to be able to interchange binary applications, uh, and uh, in many respects, uh, it is the precursor to to internet forums that. Uh, that became widely used. The discussions are threaded as with uh, web forums and the BBSs through posts are stored on the on the server sequentially. A major difference between uh, a BBS or web forum and the Usenet is the absence of a central server and a dedicated administrator. Usenet is uh, distributed among uh, a large constantly changing uh, conglomeration of new servers that uh, store and forward messages to one another via news feeds. Individual users may uh, read messages uh, from and post messages to a local server uh, which may be uh, operated by, uh, by anyone. Uh, Usenet is uh, culturally and historically significant in the, in the networked world, having uh, given rise to or popularized uh, many widely recognized concepts and terms such as uh, FAQ, uh, Flame, Sock, Puppet and uh, Spam. In the early 1990s, uh, shortly before uh, access to the internet uh, became commonly uh, affordable, 
Usenet uh, connections uh, via Fidonet's uh, dial-up BBS networks made uh, long-distance or worldwide discussions and uh, other communication uh, widespread, uh, not needing uh, a server, just, uh, just a local uh, telephone service. The name Usenet comes from the term uh, users network. The first Usenet group uh, was uh, net.general, uh, which uh, quickly became uh, net.general. Uh, uh, the first uh, commercial spam on Usenet was for, from uh, immigration attorneys, uh, Cantor and Siegel, uh, advertising uh, green card services. Usenet was uh, conceived in uh, 1979 and publicly established in 1980 at the University of North Carolina at uh, Chapel Hill and uh, Duke University over a decade before the World Wide Web uh, went online and thus before the general public received uh, access to, to the internet, making it uh, one of the oldest computer network communications uh, systems uh, still in widespread use uh, even, even today. It was originally built on the Purman's uh, ARPANET uh, employing U UUCP, uh, Unix to Unix copy as its uh, transport protocol to offer mail and uh, file transfers as well as announcements through the newly uh, developed uh, new software such as uh, A News. Uh, the name uh, Usenet emphasizes its uh, creator's hope that the Usenix organization uh, would take an action, would take an, an active role in uh, in its operation. The articles that uh, users post to Usenet are organized into the topical uh, categories uh, known as uh, uh, news groups which are themselves logically organized into hierarchies of subjects. For instance, uh, Psi.Math and Psi.Physics are within the, the Psi.Asterisk uh, uh, hierarchy, or uh, Talk.Origins uh, and uh, Talk.Atheism are in uh, the Talk.Asterisk uh, uh, hierarchy. When a user subscribes to a news group, the news client software keeps track of uh, which articles the, the user has, uh, has read. In most news groups, the majority of the uh, articles are responses to some other article. The set of articles that can be traced to one single uh, non-reply article is uh, called the thread. Uh, most modern uh, news readers display the articles arranged into threads and uh, sub-threads. For example, in the winemaking news group uh, rec.crafts.winemaking, someone might start a thread called uh, "What's the best yeast?" and uh, and that other uh, and and that thread uh, or conversation might grow into dozen, uh, dozens of uh, replies long uh, by perhaps six or or eight different uh, authors. Over several days, that conversation about different wine yeasts might uh, branch into. Uh, several subthreads in a, in a tree-like uh, form. When a user posts an, an article, it is initially only available on that user's new server. Each uh, new server talks to one or more other servers, its uh, news feeds, and uh, exchanges articles with them. In this fashion, the article is copied from server to server and should eventually reach every server in the network. The uh, later peer-to-peer -peer networks operate on uh, on a similar principle, but for Usenet it is uh, normally uh, the sender rather uh, than the receiver who initiates uh, transfers. Usenet was uh, designed under conditions when networks were much slower and not always available. Many sites on the original Usenet network would uh, connect only uh, once or twice a day to batch transfer messages uh, in and out. This is largely uh, because the POTS network was uh, typically used for transfers and uh, phone charges were lower uh, at night. The format and the transmission of uh, Usenet articles is similar to that of uh, internet email messages. The difference between uh, the two is that Usenet articles can be read by any user whose news server carries uh, the group to which the message was uh, posted, as opposed to email messages which have one or more specific recipients. Uh, today, Usenet has uh, diminished in importance with uh, respect to internet forums, uh, blogs, uh, mailing lists, and uh, social media. Usenet differs from uh, such media in, in several ways. Usenet requires uh, no personal regis registration with uh, the group uh, concerned. 
information need not to be stored in a remote server. Archives are always available and reading the messages do not require a mail or a web client, uh, but, a, but a news client. However, it is uh, now possible to read uh, and participate in news and news groups to a large uh, degree using ordinary uh, web browsers since uh, most uh, news groups are now copied to several websites. The groups uh, in alt.binaries are uh, still widely used for uh, data transfer and file and file exchange. Many internet service providers and many other internet sites operate new servers for their users to, to access. ISPs that uh, do not operate their own servers uh, directly will often offer their users uh, an account from another provider that specifically operates news feeds. In early news implementations, the server and newsreader were a single program suite running on, on the same system. Today, uh, one uses separate newsreader client software, a program that resembles an email client but uh, accesses uh, Usenet servers instead. Not all ISPs run uh, news servers. A news server is uh, one of the most difficult internet services to administer because of the large uh, amount of data involved. A small customer base compared to a mainstream internet service and a disproportionately high volume of uh, customer uh, support incidents uh, frequently complaining of uh, missing news articles. Some ISPs uh, outsource uh, news operations to specialist sites which will usually appear to, to a user as uh, through the ISP itself uh, runs the server. Many of these uh, sites carry a restricted uh, news feed with a limited number of news groups. Com commonly uh, omitted from such a news feed uh, are foreign language news groups and the alt.binaries hierarchy which largely carries uh, software music videos and images and accounts for over 99% of, uh, of article uh, data. There are also Usenet providers that offer a full unrestricted service to users whose ISPs do not carry news or that carry uh, a restricted feed. Uh, more about uh, the history of Usenet. Uh, newsgroup experiments first occurred in 1979. Uh, Tom Truscott and Jim Ellis of uh, Duke University came up with the idea as a replacement for uh, a local announcement program and established a link with the uh, nearby University of North Carolina uh, using burnt shell scripts uh, written by uh, Steve Bellovin. The public release of news uh, was in the form of conventional uh, compl complied software uh, written by Steve Daniel and Truscott in uh, 1980. Uh, Usenet was connected to ARPANET through uh, UC Berkeley which had the connections to both uh, Usenet and uh, ARPANET. Mark Horton, uh, the graduate student who uh, set up uh, the connection uh, began feeding uh, mailing lists from the ARPANET into, into Usenet with the FA uh, from ARPANET uh, identifier. Uh, Usenet gained uh, 50 member sites in, in its first year, including Reed College, University of Oklahoma and uh, Bell Labs, and uh, the number of people using the network increased uh, dramatically. However, it was still a while uh, longer before Usenet users could contribute to, to ARPANET. The network UUCP network spread quickly due to the lower costs involved and the ability to use uh, existing list lines, uh, X25 links or even uh, ARPANET connections. By 1983, uh, thousands of people participated from more than uh, 500 hosts, mostly universities and uh, Bell Lab sites, uh, but also growing number of uh, Unix related uh, companies. The number of hosts uh, nearly doubled to to 940 in 1984. More than 100 news groups uh, existed, uh, more than 20 devoted to Unix and uh, other uh, computer related topics, and at least a third to, to uh, recreation. As the mesh of uh, UUCP hosts uh, rapidly expanded, it became desirable to distinguish the Usenet subset uh, from, the, from the overall network. A vote was taken at the 1982 Usenix conference to choose uh, a new name. Uh, the name Usenet uh, was retained, but it was established that it only applied to, to news. The name UUCPNet became uh, the common name for the uh, overall network. In addition to UUCP early, uh, Usenet traffic was also exchanged with uh, Fidonet and other dial-up BBS networks. 
By the mid 1990s, there were almost uh, 40,000 uh, Fidonet systems in uh, operation, and it was uh, possible to communicate with uh, millions of users around the world with only local telephone service. Uh, widespread use of Fusionet by uh, the BBS community was uh, facilitated by the introduction of UUCP feeds uh, made possible by uh, Microsoft DOS implementations of uh, UUCP, such as uh, UF Gate, uh, UUCP to Fidonet gateways, FSUUCP, and uh, UUPC in uh, 1986. Uh, RFC 977 provided uh, the Network News Transfer Protocol, NNTP, a specification for distribution of Fusionet articles over TCP IP as a more flexible alternative to uh, informal internet transfers of UUCP traffic. Since the internet boom of the 1990s, almost all Fusionet distribution is over NNTP. Uh, the software. Early versions of uh, Fusionet uh, used the uh, Duke's uh, A News software uh, designed for one or two articles a day. Uh, Matt uh, Glickman and Horton uh, at Berkeley produced uh, an improved version called B News that could handle the rising traffic, about 50 articles uh, a day uh, as of late 1983. With a message format that offered compatibility with internet mail and improved performance, it uh, became the dominant server software. C News, developed by uh, G of uh, Collier, and uh, Henry Spencer at the University of Toronto was comparable to being used in uh, features but offered considerably uh, faster processing. In the early 1990s, uh, internet, uh, internet News by Rich Sals was developed to take uh, advantage of the continuous message flow made possible by NNTP versus the patched uh, store and forward design of uh, UUCP. Since that time, uh, INN development has uh, continued and uh, other news server software has also been uh, developed. Uh, news readers, um, news groups are uh, typically accessed with uh, news readers, applications that uh, allow users to read and reply to posting, uh, postings in news groups. These applications act as, a client, uh, act as clients to one or more news servers. Historically, Usenet was associated with uh, the Unix operating system developed by at and uh, developed at at and but uh, news readers are now available for uh, all major operating systems. Uh, modern Mail clients or communication suits commonly also have an integrated news reader. Uh, often, however, these integrated clients are low quality compared to standalone news readers and incorrectly implement Usenet protocols, uh, standards and uh, conventions. Many of these uh, integrated clients, for example, the one in Microsoft uh, Outlook Express, are disliked by purists because of their uh, misbehavior. And with the rise of the World Wide Web, uh, web frontends uh, like Web2 News have uh, become more common. Uh, web frontends have uh, lowered the technical entry barrier requirements to that uh, of one application and uh, no using an NTP server account. There are numerous websites now offering web-based gateways to, to Usenet groups, uh, although some people uh, have begun uh, filtering messages made by some of uh, the web interfaces for one reason uh, or another. Uh, Google Groups is one of such web-based front-end and some web browsers can access Google Groups uh, via news uh, protocol links uh, directly. Uh, the moderated and unmoderated uh, news groups uh, a minority of news groups are uh, moderated, meaning that uh, messages submitted by readers are not uh, distributed directly to Usenet, but instead are emailed to the moderators of the news group uh, for approval. The moderator is to receive uh, submitted articles, reviewed, review them and uh, inject approved uh, articles so that they can be uh, properly propagated worldwide. Articles approved by a moderator must bear uh, the approved header line. Moderators ensure that the messages uh, that readers see in the news group conform to the character of the news group uh, through they are not required to follow any such rules or, or guidelines. Typically, uh, moderators are appointed in the proposal for the news group and changes of moderators follow a succession plan. Uh, historically, uh, a mod that uh, asterisk, asterisk hierarchy existed before uh, using a reorganization. Now moderated news groups may appear in any hierarchy, typically with a dot moderated uh, added to uh, the group name. 
Usenet news groups in the big eight uh, hierarchy are created by proposals uh, called uh, request for discussion or, or RFD. The, the RFD is required to have the, the following information, uh, news group name, uh, check groups file entry and uh, moderated or unmoderated status. If the group is to be moderated, then at least one moderator with a valid email address must be provided. Other information uh, which is beneficial but not required includes uh, a charter, a rationale and a moderation policy if the group is to be, to be moderated. Discussion uh, of the new news group proposal follows and uh, is finished with uh, members of the Big 8 uh, management board making the decision by vote to, their, to, to either approve or disapprove the, the new news group. Unmoderated news groups uh, from the majority of Ethernet news groups and uh, messages submitted by readers for uh, unmoderated news groups are uh, immediately propagated for everyone else to, to see. Minimal uh, editorial uh, content filtering versus propagation uh, speed uh, form one uh, crux of the Usenet committee. One uh, little cited uh, defense of propagation is cancelling uh, a, a propagated message, but a uh, few Usenet users uh, use this command and uh, some news readers do not offer cancellation commands, in part because article storage expires in relatively short order way, uh, short order anyway. Uh, almost all unmoderated Usenet groups have become uh, collections of uh, spam, uh, unfortunately. Uh, technical details. Usenet is a set of protocols for generating, storing and retrieving news uh, articles which resemble uh, internet mail messages and uh, for exchanging them among a readership which is potentially uh, widely dis uh, distributed. These protocols most commonly use a flooding uh, algorithm which propagates copies throughout a network of uh, participating servers. Whenever a message re reaches a server, that uh, server forwards the message to all its network neighbors that uh, haven't yet seen uh, the article. Only one uh, copy of a message is stored uh, per server and uh, each server makes it uh, available on demand to the typically uh, local readers able to access that, uh, that server. The collection of uh, Usenet servers has thus a certain peer-to-peer -peer, uh, character in that uh, they share resources by exchanging them. The, the granularity of exchange, however, is on a different scale than a modern peer-to-peer -peer system and this characteristic excludes the actual users of the system who connect to the new servers with a typical client-server application, much like uh, an email reader. RFC 850 was the first form of specification of the messages exchanged by Usenet servers. It was superseded by RFC 1036 and subsequently by RFC 5536 and RFC 5537. In cases where uh, unsuitable content uh, has been posted, uh, Usenet has support for automated removal of posting from the whole network by creating a cancel message, although due to a lack of authentication and uh, resultant, uh, resultant uh, abuse, this capability is frequently uh, disabled. Uh, copyright holders may still request the manual deletion of infringing uh, material using the provision, uh, provisions of uh, World uh, Intellectual Property Organization Treaty uh, implementations, such as uh, the United States Online Copyright Infringement uh, Liability Limitation Act, but this would require giving uh, notice to each individual new server uh, administrator. On the internet, Usenet is transported via the Network News Transfer Protocol (NTP) on TCP port 119 uh, for standard uh, unprotected connections, and uh, on TCP port 563 uh, 500 and 563 for SSL encrypted uh, connection. Uh, I think that I can uh, leave the rest, uh, but remains to 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 say about Usenet and. Uh, and put it together with the with the next piece, uh, the third piece, which I think uh, belongs uh, belongs here, uh, which predates the modern age of internet. The third piece will be uh, Minitel. So I will leave the rest, but uh, what I have left about uh, about using it, some very little details about the organization and about the, the binary content and the binary retention and uh, then i will continue in the next episode with that and uh, and with the with the part uh, about minitel which will be the third piece 
of this uh, of this three three piece uh, history and uh, and then we shall see where where that one will take us we are getting closer to to 100 episodes and uh, I'm more than certain that I'm gonna I'm gonna continue beyond a uh, hundred uh, episodes, but uh, but on another hand, uh, hundred episodes is a lot. Uh, I would really like to continue uh, and go beyond a hundred episodes uh, as as far as uh, I can go. Uh, even though it's a it's a, it's a big uh, commitment uh, every week to to prepare and make make all these episodes uh, because you know uh, I have to uh, do the, the rest of my life I mean I have to work Monday to Friday like uh, uh, I guess uh, probably most of you and uh, I really have little time to to come up with these things and uh, put them in the article and update them and uh, and the record them and uh, push them out uh, uh, on time I try to be uh, as prepared as possible. Uh, I mean, in advance. So, whenever I can, I can prepare more than uh, one episodes. I I do. Uh, previously, uh, I I did uh, these episodes uh, online. Uh, I mean, um, live. That's the better word to say. But that required me to to have less control. Uh, uh, and less preparation in advance so so I had to uh, stick to being here and sitting here every every Saturday at 3 p.m. UTC time and uh, and just record this and, and, and stream it live uh, at the moment when it happens and somehow the, the pre-recorded format uh, comes in handy so I can uh, like you know when I have time I can record uh, two episodes in advance and then program them for uh, for distribution and uh, program them for for being streamed uh, when whenever it has to be streamed at 3 p.m. UTC time uh, for for now it seems that the the pre-recorded format uh, let's let, let me let's me continue uh, with this uh, with this podcast uh, otherwise, I, I I don't know if I if I could have uh, uh, continued the commitment if uh, if I stayed uh, uh, live uh, only uh, every Saturday. I, I don't know if I would have been able to push it uh, this far up to up to 83 uh, episodes as of now. The the pre uh, pre recording uh, uh, format and the option to pre record and and be prepared in advance and uh, schedule uh, these uh, podcast episodes are definitely helping me to to stay in business uh, with this podcast uh, it is definitely a nice uh, exercise uh, in in many ways it's nice to see uh, how much material i can i can i can bring out and uh, and how many episodes i can do and how far i can go uh, with this commitment uh, I'm sure that uh, keeping it uh, pre-recorded like I do now, uh, not requiring the, the the physical presence of myself uh, being here on a on a on a Saturday in a in a certain given hour, it definitely helps to to be able to continue uh, further. Another option would be to perhaps uh, to help uh, catch up with uh, with time and and demand. On my end, would be. Uh, if I see that I'm getting very very short on time and even pre-recording and uh, doing all this preparation is not allowing me to push a new episode out every every week then maybe maybe I would consider uh, switching to uh, uh, a, a bi-weekly format to, to push out a new episode every two weeks instead of uh, instead of every every weekend uh, as we did from the as i did from the very beginning so we will see if i ever have to come to this adjustment or not uh, for the moment i would really like to keep it uh, as a weekly uh, podcast and uh, and uh, let's just get to 100 episodes and and see how and uh, and in which form we we can take this any further 
Uh, I already see that uh, after this many episodes that it is not something which is going to make me rich or, or, or even, even famous. So I have to give up on that one. And uh, unfortunately, because of those uh, reasons, I, I have to maintain my uh, day-to-day job, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, which again uh, takes time away from uh, from all, all this podcast and all these preparations and, and all the work uh, scheduled in advance I could uh, I could do so thank you very much for listening and see you uh, next Saturday with episode 84 continuing uh, the little bit what uh, what I have left from uh, using it and uh, talking about the third piece uh, of this uh, recollection which is going to be Minitel